Hello everyone, my name is a Fox. Once again, I'm taking a look at Vitra One or Vitra One products. This is the Vitra One neckband. I've had this for about two weeks now. I've been using it uh, a lot of times at nighttime when I'm ready to go to bed. I actually start using these just to kind of relax before I go to sleep. So I'll watch either Netflix, YouTube, uh, Amazon Prime Video, any particular media streaming application works fantastic on this. As a media consumption device, using this neckband accessory has been probably my favorite way to use it. There's also a 3D player functionality where you can actually just touch a button and it'll automatically launch a 3D player function. Previously in my review, you had actually set the, the glasses themselves into a 3D mode to play 3D playback. Now with this neckband, it just does it automatically as soon as you open up the 3D player, which is super cool, makes it much, much easier to play. So if you're interested in like 3D video playback with these XR glasses, that's something that might be worthwhile for you to look at. Now, the Vitra One team pitched this idea to me, this full kit, over a year ago, and I've been waiting to test out the neckband for a long time. There's a lot that they want to do here. So there are gyros that are located in the glasses themselves. So it is spatially aware of how you're looking around in your environment. So they do want to have the ability so that you can like have virtual screens that will be spatially understood where you're looking around them. Kind of what like Apple's Vision Pro is doing so that you can have your main monitor and then look at screens around you. For demo purposes, I'm not going to be showing that particular part off. Also, that's still getting built out by the Vitra One team itself. But they have a plan to do that. And you can also, outside of just using the D-pad on here to navigate, there's an option that you can actually press so that when you're looking around, it'll leverage the gyros that are in the glass themselves to be your pointing device. And then you can just press the select button whenever you want to select anything. That is cool and all when you're sitting or standing up. But when you're laying down in bed, like I've often been when using this device, that is not a convenient way to act as a pointing or a navigation device. Just because you're not... When your head's buried in a pill, you're not really like looking around, be able to control anything. So I've often just had it using the D-pad itself. Overall, I think it was the wise choice to choose the Android TV version just because of UX reasons and largely because I have been using this mostly as a media consumption device. This particular video is going to be divided up into a few different sections. We're going to jump into what the user interface and what everything looks like. I am going to be able to uh, capture this feed and display it on another display and then capture that display so that you guys can see what's going on and I can kind of navigate you guys around and see how this device actually works and operates. All right, in this part of the review, let's start talking about the Vitra One neckband and some of the features and functionality it has, starting with what those buttons actually do and how we actually can control this. So if we take a look at the left-hand side, you're going to see that we have our power button and then our volume buttons, and this would actually correspond to the Vitra One headset itself, but right now, because I'm outputting to my portable monitor, you can actually see it going down here. On our right side, we have our settings menu. So if you press this, out pops the setting menu. And then over here, you can see that I have a series controller already set up. So I'm going to go ahead and just demo that that can work for you. So we're just going to go ahead and kind of navigate around real quick. So you can use a series controller to kind of navigate around. And how you would wear it is that this would be around your neck on this side. So this control will be on your left hand side. So you'd pretty much go with your right hand, or at least I have been to control the menu settings themselves. So this is more or less presented uh, like this as a controller. So this would be down, right, left, up. And then on the top right, we have the 3D player itself. So this actually is a quick hotkey button that would jump you straight into the built-in media player for the Vitra One itself, which runs a modified version of the Google TV Android version. So we'll actually talk about that in a moment. So this is actually really cool because on the Vitra One, if you wanted to make use of 3D, you kind of had to put the glasses in the 3D mode. However, with the Vitra One neckband, as soon as you load up this app, you can see right over here that they actually included a uh, Sekiro, 3, Sekiro 3D clip, and that plays on the Vitra One in 3D perfectly. So you put any side-by-side -side 3D video file on this, and it'll start playing in the 3D version of that on the glasses, which is really cool, makes it super se uh, simple and seamless. So this is actually one thing that I absolutely love about the neckband itself, is just how much easier it is to actually play 3D content with this particular neckband, and is one of the reasons why I would actually recommend it. Uh, I realize that not everyone wants 3D stuff, but if you do, it's this is kind of part and parcel with it. Then you have the just traditional Android back button, and then you can just go directly to home. 
So what we have is in our main setup here is a very, very Google TV like appearance. And if we go on the top, we can see that we have apps. But more importantly, if we go over store, this is actually the feature store itself. And there are some particular apps that they have on here. One thing that I would love if they could arrange to happen is to get a Game Pass like app so that Xbox X Cloud works. You can see that they have PS Play and Xbox Play here. This is for streaming from those consoles directly. So if I go to apps and I just show you real quick, I've already installed the Xbox Play app. I just pressed it. This launched right into my Xbox console. Now there is a bit of a registration part that you have to set up. You have to sign into your account on the device itself and register your Xbox. But at that point, whatever you're doing here, you can see that I'm just using the Xbox controller and this just runs. So if I were to just load any particular game in here, uh, let us do something that'll load fast. We'll do No Man's Sky. Christmas. And then you can see we just loaded straight into Back to the Future of the game. I'm moving around. And this is streaming from my Xbox, which is basically two floors above. So this is not like xCloud. This is directly connecting to your console. And that's the type of experience that you would really expect. So I'm going to go ahead and so you can right here you can see it says Fox is playing remotely. And you can disconnect me. So that would be one thing. I'm just going to go ahead and turn off the console itself. So you can see right there, this is the type of screen that you would see for connecting to it. So you'd hit connect, provided that it was on or you have your uh, console on a particular power saving mode where you can actually just launch it. Same will go for the PS Play. So if you have a PS4 or PS5, you'll be able to remotely stream from that. And these are apps that are included via Veecher's own app store uh, with the neckband itself. So that is a nice feature that they include in there. But you also have like the Google Play Store itself. So you can actually go in here and, you know, do whatever you want to do. And I don't know if you can hear it or not, but let me see if I can get it close enough to you. Right now, it's pretty low. And one of the things that you can do, let's bring up the settings. You can change the D-pad direction. You can set up a USB host, which would be for this part right here. And you can also enable quiet mode. Right now, it's off. So if I enable it on, that will have the fan going at its lowest setting. That doesn't mean that you can't hear it. It's just at its quietest setting. The thing that I would make mention here is that this part of the band does actually start to get hot when you keep quiet mode on. So overall, I think that you should really just have this off just because it seems like it's necessary because this actually does start getting warm. And because you're wearing it around your neck, it does feel warmer when you're in quiet mode so i almost never recommend it however because you can effectively hear the fan when you start really putting the device through its paces that if you planned on using this device when you were laying down in bed and you had a partner with you that you didn't want to annoy with noise that it can become a, a bit audible which is a bit funny because the speakers on the feature ones aren't very audible but this fan is uh, so that's one knock that I actually have against the device is just the fan and the heat that's produced on this particular device. All right, in this section, we're going to take a look and see about getting emulators running on the device itself. So just so you can see, I'll go to ROMs where I have it. And I actually have a ROM loaded here, and it doesn't see it at all. So there's nothing that I could do. Even if I go to Browse, it doesn't highlight anything. I actually had to load up PPSSPP in its own environment because it couldn't actually store files uh, where it needed to. And even when I check the directory, so if I go, you can see that for files and media, I have it set to allow. Now, uh, there's nothing else that I can possibly do here, but the system itself is pretty resistant from trying to allow anything to be written or read from any particular file system. Likewise, for RetroArch, if we try to load this, this will load up. It won't actually load through the Google Play Store. We actually have to load it in through Aptoid. But even then, when we're here, when we try to do like the uh, core updaters, you can see that it doesn't actually install any of these as well. So then you have to get the core files themselves and then put them in the system directory itself, all the BIOS files, put them in the system directory itself. So it's a little bit of a hassle uh, if you actually wanted to play. So again, you can see that it's possible to run emulated games. It's just that it's a bit of a pain in the butt to actually get it running on the uh, headset itself. So again, just so you can see, I'm going to go ahead and load up the system menu over here. So that'll pop out over here and you can see the neck bend battery. So that is there and it's, this is actually running. It's just, it's just a bit of a pain. One thing that isn't a pain is that you can actually load up. This is through the Google Play Store itself. So you can see right here, this is Bard's Tale. This is a game that I actually bought through Google Play Games. 
So there are a number of Google Play games that you can play directly on the device itself. So Android-based games work no problem. It's just that playing emulated games poses a bit of a problem just because of how the type of write access that we have. This could just be what is on my device itself and how it's set up and not reflective of how it's going to be when it's officially available, but it's something that I have to report on anyway. So if you're looking to play games, basically, as I showed before, you're going to be using these particular remote streaming apps. These are available through the uh, Veecher One Store itself instead of the Google Play Store. These work just fine. I use the, the Xbox One. For xCloud support, you have to use TV Bro, but what's the problem is, is that TV Bro, it kind of uses this like virtual touch cursor, and when you press A, it will highlight that. So it's pretty impossible to play xCloud through TV Bro as well. So right now, the only real solutions that we have are streaming directly from the hardware themselves. So you have to either own an Xbox or own a PlayStation to be able to stream from there. It is possible to run emulated games, but it just requires a bunch of hoops to jump through on my particular unit. However, playing Google Play games itself or Android-based games directly from the Google Play market, much, much easier. So that's what the game playing part of this looks like directly on the device itself. All right, let's start talking about the things that I like and I dislike, starting with the things that I like. Now, the first thing that I want to talk about, the probably the biggest thing that a lot of people are not going to appreciate because it's almost invisible when you think about it, because people aren't really going to be conceptualizing how it actually operates. The important part of the neck band itself being a self-contained unit, having the battery, having the SOC, fully driving everything else, is that it's on my neck and it's on my person. This is a wearable at this point in time. I have been using this device while laying down in bed, and while I've used other XR glasses while laying down in bed or laying sitting on my couch and playing on a Steam Deck or a Switch or a PC gaming handheld, I have done that. But because there's a cable that's connected to another machine, that's expensive. I am very much aware of that, and I'm not trying to fall asleep. If I know that I'm getting tired, I disconnect and I put everything away, whereas with the neckband, I have fallen asleep with this on me because I didn't care, because I know that when I'm rolling around, it's not going to do anything. It's going to stay on my person. So that particular freedom that you have is probably the biggest value that this neckband offers the Veecher One glasses is just the freedom to move around without having to worry about where you're putting any other device because it just travels with you. Uh, and also because it's such a short wire that you're really not going to snag on anything at all. So that's its biggest feature. Largely, I've been using this as a media consumption device. I watch stuff while I'm sleeping. Veecher One team is still working on a way that you can connect and have productivity purposes with this so that you can be on your main PC working, looking through these glasses, looking at your main screen, and then looking around and because of the gyros in here, having the uh, virtual screen surround you that would also be connected to your main display. Now, while that sounds cool and everything, a thing that's actually going to happen, there are two layers that are obfuscating my view and then this big bar that's on top of my vision. For that to happen, all of these layers really need to lighten up and not obfuscate my view so much. Because if I was sitting down using my monitor, I would kind of need to crane my neck up a little to actually look through the lens where it's less impacting my vision. And then at that point, I'm going to be like, you know, looking around. I don't really see much value in that respect. And that goes for pretty much every different type of glasses, even the X-Reels or whatever. I don't think it's there just yet. Apologies, I digressed a bit there, but this is just my opinion on the current state of XR glasses that are available today. And I don't think that the productivity part of it is there. Right now, these are very much just luxury and kind of just filling your eyesight with another display without annoying people around you. So they're privacy focused. They're very luxury in that way. So that is where these XR glasses currently sit. The other thing that I really like is that the carrying case for the neckband itself also contains a battery bank that will charge the device when you stow it away. So that for all intents and purposes, when you're ready to use it again, it's most likely going to be charged back up to 100%. That's a really cool feature, and I love that about that. If I was to be a little bit greedy, I wish that there was a space for uh, one set of glasses, possibly two, but even just one set of glasses I think would be worthwhile, just because carrying around two different things kind of bugs me a little bit, but that's just a small nitpick, and that's just me being greedy, not to get a knock at or anything. Now let's talk about the things that I dislike about the neckband. So there is a means that you can actually enable quiet mode on this device. However... When you enable quiet mode, that just puts the fan at its lowest RPM. You can still hear that provided that you're not listening to anything. However, 
The problem with using quiet mode is that the the base of the machine where all the guts are, the everything that foundationally is supporting the device, the battery, the SOC, and the fan, all of that are located right here. What winds up happening is that all of that heat that's building up because the fan isn't able to evacuate the heat, it starts building up and radiating outward into the case. And you can feel it traveling up your neck. Now, it doesn't get to the point where it burns or anything, but it gets warm enough where it's uncomfortable. It gets, it gets warm enough where you are noticing the warmth and you're no longer enjoying what you're watching. So that's the one bad part about the system is how loud the fan gets versus how hot it gets when you try to enable quiet mode. And through my use of this, every time at night, I basically have just been ignoring using quiet mode and just letting the fan ramp up whenever it gets too hot. The only downside to that is that when the fan ramps up, not only can you hear it, but also people that are two feet away can hear it, which is ironic because when I'm blasting the music or sound out of the glasses themselves, my wife that's two feet away can't really discern what's being the sound of it. So it's funny that the pitch of the fan through the turbulence and everything is more audible than these speakers when they're at max volume. So that's one area that I think needs to get worked on is that the entire idea of these being privacy focused and also being mindful of the people around you gets ruined a little bit by the fan on this device. So that's one thing that I think really needs to get worked on is uh, the thermal properties of the device. The battery on here is fine. You know, you can only do so much. It's really just about engineering what you're going to be doing here. If you really start pushing the device and running games and stuff, it also has to power these glasses. These glasses don't have any batteries. So what you're going to wind up having is a situation where battery life might be less than two hours if you're running a native 3D game, a native Android game on here that you're rendering and putting to the glasses. However, for media playback, you're looking between three to five hours, which is perfectly fine. So that's my review on the Vitra One neckband. It's unfortunate that the balance of heat and noise from the device itself has not struck a proper balance. And it is possible that the Vitra One team still works that out and creates something that's better. But I can only report on what I have now and it really becomes subjective to you, the viewer, on what you're trying to accomplish. Do you care about the outside noise pollution to people around you and you're trying to minimize that? You can enable quiet mode to avoid that and also better enjoy whatever media you're doing. But eventually you're going to feel that heat build up uh, and that'll be a little bit annoying. And because it's such a luxury device, you don't really want to have those annoyances. Largely, this is going to be subjective. So people have different tolerances for both heat and noise. So my own views on that might not reflect what you have, but I can only report on what I have and it is noticeable. So I am reporting on that. That's pretty much the only thing that I wish was better on the device. Everything else is really, really cool. I actually still use it to this day whenever I want to relax and kind of lay back and not annoy anyone around me, whether my kids are watching uh, the living room TV or my wife is watching somebody in the bedroom TV. I put these on so that I can watch what I want to watch and not annoy anyone else. And I still use them today despite the fact that they can get a little loud when the fan kicks up. My wife doesn't seem to really care anymore. She has just kind of washed it out, knowing that it'll spike up every now and again. It'll pick up and then kind of die down. But again, just something that I have to report on. Hopefully this was informative. As always, guys, thank you for your time. And thanks for watching.